okay, yeah, this car is amazing fun. Mid-engine, rear-wheel drive does seem to be the ultimate layout. Oh. So yeah, I pretty much have to take back everything bad I said. Let's start this thing up. Alrighty, so I'm running late and I'm sweating now. This is off to a shitty start, but I've got the C8 Corvette convertible right now. So <laughs> let's get going. I just had to drive through LA traffic to get this thing, which sucked. And it's making me in a bad mood, but here I am. So uh, this car is great already, but I'm not that in love with it. I could almost give it back already and not care. Uh, the engine is just boring. <laughs> the LT2 is a great engine, I guess, but as much as I love a torquey pushrod engine, this is just the wrong application for it. The car has become too good for the engine. It just doesn't rev high. It sounds like shit. <laughs> and it makes a ticking noise constantly. Right now I've got the AC blasting so I can't hear it, but it makes a ridiculous ticking noise as if the exhaust manifold has holes in it or is unbolted from the block. It just makes a constant annoying ticking noise and usually I like that kind of thing, but in this car it just rubs me the wrong way. It's an amazing car. The seats are great. The wheel is interesting. I don't love the steering wheel. It's just not quite right. <laughs> the 9 and 3 are like too low, and it's just not that great of a feeling. The 9 and 3 feels bad. 10 and 2 is cool, but it's, it's up really tall here. It has the square top and the square bottom. It's a small wheel. It has virtually no feel, but who cares. It has amazing paddle shifters, so that's good. The paddle shifters are nice and cold and thick and metal obviously you can tap your fingers on them I love a nice cold shiny metal paddle shifter so they got that right they absolutely got that right but uh, yeah, while the seats are good they don't have that much bolstering the bolstering ends like below halfway down your torso it's, it's kind of weird they hold you fine but the number one problem with this car, I don't fit in this fucking car, and I'm only six feet tall. How could anyone taller than me possibly drive this around? I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> this thing is too small. My head is basically touching the ceiling. All I can see is the sun visor, and I can't see anything in this car. Uh, so... So yeah, my, I have the seat all the way down, obviously, and the sun visor is right in my face with a fucking sticker right in my eyes. So I can't see out of this car. The fact that Cletus McFarland, YouTuber, who is like six foot eight, he drove one of these around and he bought one briefly then got rid of it, but there's no way he fit in this comfortably. No way. <laughs> So, manual mode, here we go. Let's try to enjoy the car. Um, hopefully, there's not much traffic on this road today. A couple days ago, I had the GTR, and it, it didn't go well with traffic. But turning off AC, getting ready to enjoy. Second, second gear. So, the transmission is great. Really fast shifts, really smooth. Nothing wrong with it at all. It's great. I tried to avoid that pothole and I hit it in the worst part. Damn. Wow, good thing I wasn't going any faster. That pothole's fucked. Okay, so I just hit a pothole, which killed my mood, but here we go. So 
So yeah, so far I've just driven this on the highway. Maybe that's why I don't like it. Nice. It's a quick enough car, but it, it seems slower than I was expecting. I don't know why. It can run like an 11 second quarter mile. But I guess it's just getting off the line really well, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just not used to a square top on a wheel, but with how little visibility I have, I guess it makes sense to have the square top on, on the wheel. So the car is very quiet, stock exhaust, just way too quiet, can't hear much of anything, no crackles or pops, nothing to enjoy. Of course it goes through a corner amazingly well, has traction all day. The mid-engine layout is great. I have tons of traction so far, punching it in the lower gears. I'm going to give this piece of shit some room. When I, I do enjoy a naturally aspirated car, it has to be a special engine. Ugh, this engine sucks. pedal's way too stiff. I don't know why they did that. They're trying to scare you. It's a, yeah, it's as stiff as a BMW M car, which is a little too stiff. Yeah, it feels like there's a brick under the pedal when you press it. Uh, yeah, the power isn't enough to keep me entertained. It's, it's just okay. I'm not impressed. <laughs> I know it's only 495 horsepower. I was driving a modified GTR four days ago and it had blow off valves and an exhaust and that thing put non-stop smiles on my face. This is just a boring pushrod V8 and it's way too quiet and no turbo noise, no supercharger noise, no anything. So, eh. Aside from having the engine in the back, <laughs> there's nothing else I can even say about it. It's torquey and boring. It sounds good, but it desperately needs an exhaust modification. It's ticking. It's just ticking and ticking back there. It's all you can hear while you drive this car. It's sort of quiet in the cabin, but not really. It's not that well insulated. You can hear a lot of road noise. A medium amount. About the same as the GTR, I guess, but all I can hear while I'm driving is that 6.2 ticking, ticking away. Ugh, annoying. So I can't actually enjoy the car yet until this guy gets out of my way. So yeah, the steering is especially numb. Gives me nothing through the corners. Gives me no feedback at all. Less than the GTR. So that's not a plus. And yeah, these seats don't quite hold me enough. It's just literally boring. And it's not that fast. The GTR from a couple days ago was faster. So, <laughs> oh well, I'm going to try to enjoy this car. So Corvettes have been an obsession of mine since about 97. There was a C5 which lived at the, the condo where my grandmother used to live in New Jersey. and. As a child, I would see that silver C5, and it inspired me to get into cars. But, yeah, I love the C5, the C6, the C7 is okay, but I love what they did with this car overall. So it looks 
looks like it does just about 60 in second. Yeah, exactly 60, I guess. 61 downhill. So it's a beautiful day to enjoy this car. Let's see. Nah, after driving a modified GTR so recently, this car is just boring. can take a corner, that's for sure. It's kind of spinning through there, rotated really, really nicely. So yeah, like I said, sounds like the engine has an exhaust leak or something. There's so much ticking. The the Camaro SS with the, the LT1 didn't do that. <laughs> Not as much. All right, here we go. First gear. Let's see if this is fast. <laughs> and it gets traction. It's just, uh, <laughs> I wish it was exciting me more. I don't know. Maybe nothing excites me anymore. I don't know. Wow. Yeah, it can definitely use that low-end torque to great effect coming through a corner like that. It just barely spun the tires out of there. So yeah, the, it's, it's amazing to take corners with too quiet. Oh, traction control locked me out right there. It didn't even let me hit the gas at all. That's cool. Uh, slow ass Volkswagen ruining it for everyone. You're ruining it for the rest of us! This has a G-force meter, but you have to look away from the road to see it. Yeah, this has eight speeds in the transmission. Interesting. It does like 1500 RPM at 73 miles per hour. Really low cruising RPM. So that's cool. But, and it does it does 60 in second gear, so that's good. So they did a good job on the ratios. But yeah, it sounds sounds bad with the with the ticking noise. Oh, can you hear that on camera? So, boo. So I know it's a Corvette, it has to have a pushrod V8, and I guess it shouldn't be any other way, but I guess I just need to be in a ZR1 or a Z06 because those will have boost or a high revving, naturally aspirated engine. I hear the Z06 will have some sort of really high revving, awesome V8, so that's good. And I'm sure the ZR1 will have boost, of course, so, yeah, the C8 Corvette is definitely an amazing thing, but uh, everyone's claim that, oh, I can't believe this is the base model. I can believe it's the base model because the engine's boring as hell, but uh, it's an amazing chassis, and I'm impressed with that. It just doesn't give me any feeling through the wheel. Yeah, not much at all. And something about the square wheel is weird, and just the shape of the wheel I don't like. So, traction control is really weird about this bumpy road. It won't even let me try to give a gas over the bumps. Won't, won't even let me try. But that's okay. Second gear. Yeah, the transmission is really fast shifting, definitely. So yeah, I can tell this is an amazing car and a lot of fun can be had with it. It's just not that much fun for me driving around by myself because I like taking corners, but really I just need a special, special engine. Something loud and, and interesting with personality. While this technically does have personality, it's not enough for the car. Basically the same exact engine was in the Camaro that I drove several months ago and I loved it in that application, but it's just too boring for this. Here we go. Wow. Beautiful day. 
So yeah, traction control really cuts in and uh, doesn't let you give it throttle, but I'm not gonna put it in any other mode for right now. I just don't need to mess with it until I'm more used to the car. shaking around today. This car rides kind of rough, I guess. Hmm. Maybe I set something up badly. Anyway, first half of the review is done. I'm getting more used to the car and I am warming up to it, and I do like it. It's just not putting a big smile on my face, unfortunately. Oh well. So the interior of this car is fine. I like it. It's got a pretty nice look to it for a cheaper car. The main, uh, special thing the whole driver's area is like sunken down into the dash or something like that the dash has all these strange levels to it but uh it's cool it's got this fake leather stuff stitching on there stitching all all around and overall it's nice um they are gonna redesign this from what i heard they rushed this part of the design and they're not pleased with it and uh <laughs> I guess I'm okay with it, but it is kind of weird having this here. It feels like there's a center console with the door open while you're driving until you get used to it, but it certainly gives you a cockpit feeling, that's for sure. And useful little center console, sort of, and a little thing over here. And uh, so this is the mode button. Oh, uh, you turn this for the different modes. Oh, okay. You turn that and it changes the modes of sport track. I'll probably go for track since the traction control has been so invasive so far. The thing has great throttle response, so I like that. And a little display here. It's got the, this for the shifter. Interesting. Park, reverse, neutral drive, manual. And there's uh, traction off. So yeah, I will mess with the modes a little bit. Overall, a nice interior, a good place to be. I'm just too tall for it, and I'm only six feet tall, and this is all I see driving down the road. I see a sticker on the, the visor. So, I just simply don't fit in the car. And, and the seats are pretty good. They're not bad at all, but it's just weird how the bolstering ends so far down, and it's not the most aggressive bolstering to begin with. So. I'd like a little more aggressive seat, but they're fine for what they are. So yeah, luckily it doesn't have the stupid uh, like electronic television screen for the rear view mirror. It just has a normal one seemingly. All right. So it's cool how the door handle is concealed under here. That's great. And of course the mark of a real supercar is the side vents and it has them. They look good. Nice big brakes up there. The brakes are too stiff, but they work really well. The thing looks pretty good. I do enjoy how it looks. Yeah, the front end and the sides are perfect. The rear end it's a lot like a Camaro in some ways, but that's fine. It's still kind of growing on me. The stripe, the stripe or whatever on this one, it's, uh, it kind of sets it off nicely, I think. But uh, it's not the most beautiful car from the rear. I actually don't love how it looks, but eh, it looks okay. But every other angle looks really good, I'd say. That's a fat, brake caliper in the rear with another little one. Great. This car doesn't have a lift mode or anything on this particular one. And it has a fairly sizable wheel gap, but that's fine. Huh. The way this protrudes doesn't look quite right. It looks like it's broken, but that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, it's a hell of a car. It just needs an exhaust modification for me to enjoy it, or a supercharger, or just a more powerful setup. But it is 
quite a machine, quite a machine. Well, let's get this thing back to the ocean and get out of here. Get him back to SeaWorld! But first, let's see how the top works. Huh, someone taped over something here. What is that? Some kind of OB2... Oh, it's an OBD2 uh, tracker thing. They're they're keeping track of what I'm doing with this car. That's funny. Or they're tracking where I am. Well, this car is slow, so I won't be going that fast. <laughs> they can see that I hit 120 or something already, but nothing too crazy. So, uh, yeah, the stitching is nice in here. Um, what was I going to show you? Oh, yeah, let's try the top. Nice deep little frunk up in here. Cool. This is an incredible car and I do like it a lot. It's just, uh, it's strong suit of course is going through corners, having that engine in the back and uh, the couple corners I have put it through aggressively, they have been really, really amazing. I'm just, uh, I guess my particular, my particular brand of car enthusiasm involves uh, a lot of turbo noises or really high revs or something like that. So the, the engine's just a little underwhelming, but the LT2 is a great engine, of course, but uh, I just had to get used to it a little bit. So let's give this another shot. Manual mode, I'm gonna put it in track. Track, there we go. So I don't know how to launch this car yet, but I'll try that later on tonight. I'll, I have plenty of time to play with that. Alrighty, here we go. Gonna give it to her in first gear carefully. Track mode, here we go. Yeah, this car, the capabilities are so high that you, you want to push it really hard without even realizing how hard you're trying to push it, so. <laughs> this car simultaneously feels like you're going faster than you are and slower than you are, if that makes any sense. The capabilities are so high that you're so low, so low to the ground in this thing. It, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, sorry if there's more camera movement than normal today. So this car has the wonderful curve of the fender right out the windshield to look at on both sides. It's a great view out the windshield here. It feels like a real supercar when you see that view because you can tell there's no engine uh, uh, under the center there. It looks cool. So I'm going to try popping the little back window. Oh, cool. Yeah, you can hear it better. You can hear the intake noise better. I like that. Woo. Okay, I do like this car. Oh, oh, traction control just cut me out. <laughs> and I'm in track mode. <laughs> I just tried to gun it out of the corner and it completely cut me out of, of the throttle. That's ridiculous. Uh, I guess you have to sh completely shut it off, but I'm not ready to do that necessarily, so it's kind of annoying that track mode is so intrusive. Even in third gear, it just cut me out of the throttle again. I have to shut off traction control. That's ridiculous. So traction control off, it says. <laughs> I thought it would give me a warning or something, but it's forcing me to do it. It's so, so annoying otherwise. It's not spinning. Oh, yeah it is. <laughs> Wow, once you get the back end moving around a tiny bit, this is amazing. Wow. <laughs> okay, yeah, this car is amazing fun. It is quick. 
quick. Yeah, this car is what they call deceivingly quick. It's so capable, and uh, the engine's so torquey. Doesn't seem like you're going that fast, but you are. It's definitely an amazing chassis. Here's a little turn. <laughs> so it got the back end out like I thought it would, but it was very easy to control. <laughs> wow, this thing is a riot. I'm going to be careful from here on out. So here's the flower stand and the fruit stand. <laughs> I always make a lot of noise right here. I apologize, but here we go. Here's that bird I like. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> Not bad. The fact that the car is rear-wheel drive but always has traction is a wonderful thing. Yeah, mid-engine rear-wheel drive does seem to be the ultimate layout. My flip-flops are sliding up. I got on the brakes so hard at some point. Flip-flops back. There we go. So yeah, this is quite a road to have this car on. I'm gonna put that back window back up. There we go. So for right now, I'll turn traction control back on just to be safe. It definitely lets you get the back end out <laughs> without it. So I had some fun, but I'll take it easy now. So I'm officially feeling comfortable in this car, and it is great. It is really, really great. So the only other mid-engine car I've driven was the BMW i8 that I tested, and it was great. This has more power. Not that much more, but a bit more. And they both feel like little go-karts. Mid-engine supercar type of things. Yeah, they feel like some sort of go-kart. They're so nimble and light in the front end and everything. So yeah, quick enough to have a lot of fun. Not quick enough to really amaze me or anything, but the main skill of this car seems to be 0 to 60 and I look forward to trying some launching later on. The main skill as far as using its power goes. Wow, it does feel great. There's virtually there's almost no roll. It stays really flat and has tons and tons of grip and yeah it does feel nice and light there is something to this whole mid-engine thing yeah having the engine back there it's a great feeling still not sure about this steering wheel wow I'm a lot more comfortable with this car having gotten the back end out so yeah I pretty much have to take back everything bad I said but just a couple of modifications would make this car pretty much perfect just a little more exhaust noise. Maybe see if you can make more int intake noise somehow. Yeah, it's just quiet. <laughs> Can't hear anything. But some people like quiet. I generally don't. This engine technically does have a lot of personality being a pushrod engine. And the ticking noise that I'm complaining about, that is that does make it special, of course. Yeah, this chassis is just so good. The car is so good. The engine is slightly underwhelming, but no, it does the job just fine. It's smooth and reliable and torquey as hell. So it does just fine. 495 horsepower is a respectable, respectable amount. Plenty for most people, but I prefer a little more. But no, it's, it's plenty of fun. So it is a beautiful day out here. I'll try to give these people some room so I can actually use this car. I got this review going too late, so I'm stuck in traffic here already. It sucks. Wow. You can 
hear an ever so slight rumbling when you let off the gas. Sounds cool. On this bumpy road, I keep putting my foot down and it just blinks the, the traction control and gives me no throttle. I'm just uh, amazed how intrusive the, th the traction control is, but whatever. They really don't want you to crash this thing. People still do, but <laughs> by shutting it off. <laughs> it needs to be less intrusive uh, while it's on, otherwise people will definitely shut it off. So the road's basically over. Traffic kind of screwed me on this one, but I got to put this through a couple corners and the turns I got to go through were amazing. So this car is just a little bit subdued in stock form. It's a little quiet and uh, more horsepower is always good, but overall this car is amazing. That intake noise. The intake noise is nice. This C8 returned the same 12 miles per gallon as the GTR, and the same exact 0 to 60 of 3.45 seconds. Let's give this thing a SAM score. Category, powertrain. Transmission. This dual clutch unit is very quick and seems stout too. 9. Output. This LT2 is powerful, but not really. 8. Personality. While it is boring for the car, this pushrod mill does make lots of sounds. 7. Reliability. It's hard to beat a GM V8 for reliability. 9. Category, chassis. Capability. This mid-engine beast is ultra capable. 9. Fun. Once traction control is off, this thing is tons of fun. 9. Safety. This is a nice fresh design and ought to be quite safe. 8. Driver inputs. The steering wheel is utter garbage and there's no feel. Seats aren't perfect either. 5. Category. Value. Maintenance. I doubt these need anything special, maybe trans fluid changes. 9. Cost of entry. For about 80 grand, this is one serious car. 10. Long term. Even though it's just a Corvette, I predict these C8s will never really lose much value. They're just so good. 9. Fit and finish. This car is very well put together, but with cheaper feeling materials. 7. Category. Styling. Innovation. GM really broke the mold when making this Corvette. Nicely done. 10. Longevity. I think the rear end and the headlights will date this car before too long. 6. Wow factor. Even in 2021, people still get excited about these cars and are amazed. 9. Personality. This car does have a style of its own and that unique Corvette character. I love it. 10. That all adds up to a total of 134 points. That's 4 points shy of the BMW i8 and 6 behind the Nissan GTR. But what a car. Thanks for watching and happy motoring.